big part of the reason why drawing is so difficult for most of us is because we just make it difficult. So let's let's uh, jump right in and look at what I'm talking about here. So the first thing I like to do, um, she has got a big mess of hair, right? So we have to figure out how we're going to map the structure of the head while also capturing what the hair is doing. So what I like to do is what part of the portrait do I know for sure? Well, we're gonna go with the top of the head here. Maybe I'll go a little higher with this. And then I think I want the portrait to be about this big. So that's where the bottom will be, bottom of the chin. Now I'm just thinking about the angle from the brow ridge down to the chin, right? And so I'm using just this technique where I hold up my, my pencil or my Conte, and I find this angle, and I pop it in like that. Okay, that might be a little bit too steep, so I'm gonna recheck this. No, I think it's looking correct. Okay, now I wanna know how high up or how far down is this brow ridge gonna be? Because that really dictates where this Angle changes direction. So I'm gonna measure from the chin to the eyebrow. And that is almost exactly halfway, slightly above. So maybe something like to here is where that brow ridge is gonna be. So I make a little mark. Now, also thinking about angle here, not letting myself relax and just think it's straight across. It's gonna be something like that. And I know that at this brow ridge, it's gonna cut back at a pretty serious angle, quite like this. Okay, the next major question I have to ask myself, how far to the left or right do I put the right side of her head? This is where you really have to be exact. So I'm gonna measure from the chin to the top of the head so basically the entire vertical length of the head. Okay, and I get a basic measurement here. It's gonna be about like here. And there are endless ways to figure out the width of the head here. You can compare it to so many different structural landmarks on the subject. If you want more information about how to measure like that, go check out my video, Finding Distance, on my YouTube channel. Okay, so we have got the top of the head, the chin, the right side, and the brow ridge placed here. Now, we can take this hair and sort of get a basic idea of how it's gonna flare out over there. And I'm not worried about too much detail here, but I do just sort of want to get, make sure that I'm getting the big picture captured here. So something like this. See how I'm reducing the complex shape of the hair into just this very simple shape. That's the name of the game. Okay. So now, angle for the back of the head. So I know it's gonna be something like this. The good thing about hair is we can really push it in, push it back out and it's gonna be very forgiving. But I am thinking about just that general shape. Okay, so we've got the brow ridge. I'm guessing that the hairline right here is gonna be about halfway between the eyebrow and the top of the head. Feels about right. Once again, hairlines move a whole lot. So it's one of those parts of the drawing where if you get it wrong, it's probably gonna be okay. Don't get it wrong by too much though. Do your measuring. Okay. And then the hair is gonna cascade around something like this. I'm gonna keep this loose because I really do want to make sure I get the ear and the jawline placed correctly. Okay. Before I go too much farther, yeah, this jawline has to be placed. The back of the neck, jawline, all that's so important. And I feel like the portrait is really gonna start to come together once I get this jaw placed correctly in the back of the neck. So we really do need to figure out how far to the right or the left are we gonna put this neck. 
really I'm thinking about that prominent sternocleidomastoid or just that big neck muscle that you can see coming down from behind her ear. So let's see. So I will measure from her cheekbone, which is gonna be close to vertical, so close to about here, from her cheekbone to the inside of the jaw. And that's gonna be this distance right here. So this is about where the inside of the jaw is gonna be. I'll remeasure that against something else here pretty soon, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna be what it's. Something like this, I'm gonna step back, how's it feeling? Letting my eye dart back and forth between the subject and the drawing, does it feel correct? Okay, now that we have this in, I can get the angle for the sternocleidomastoid in there, right there. And the front of the neck. I'm gonna just find that angle and see how far in the chin is it gonna come. I'm thinking somewhere like right about there, and I think the line for the throat is more important than the actual contour. I can add that later. But the line for the throat is so definite. So we're getting this interesting shape here. And then the neckline. Just putting this in. Something like that. Really focusing more on the angles and not so much on a complete drawing. I just want to get these angles correct. See how I'm letting these angles flow too far in these different directions. That's just so that I can clearly see the angle and not have to worry about measuring the distance. The angle is more important. The distance will come later. Okay. So the throat right here. Here's the other sternocleidomastoid coming in. Um, I want to see, this is the super sternal notch right there. I just released a video on the super sternal notch on my Patreon, so if you're interested, go check that out. But placing that super sternal notch always is so important. So I think it's going to be like right about there. Okay, I want to get this trapezius on the right side of the neck. I think it's going to come down something like this. And then on this far side, pretty simple here. Okay, stepping back, am I seeing all of the major shapes presented faithfully here? I think I like what's happening so far. So a big part of keeping portraiture simple is you're just allowing yourself to ignore the details and pretend like this photo reference is just this hyper simple combination of simple shapes. So it's like one major shape for the head, got the brow ridge planned, one major shape for the neck, one major shape for the hair. So it's almost like it's just a still life or something like that. The complexity will come, the details will come, but not until we get this faithfully captured on the paper here. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to begin to nuance this brow ridge. I'm observing kind of this angle that it comes in at here. And then it's going to push back out into this cheekbone. And then the cheekbone is coming down here. I'm stepping back, looking at what I made. Does it feel like the photograph? Next thing, I'm thinking about the negative space here. Coming down the brow, the eyebrow, to the bridge of the nose. And then one thing I wanna do is observe the space between the tip of her nose and the cheek. And I'm kind of, that's the sort of shape I'm looking at. Is this shape from here to here, is that the right amount of space? Then the angle for the nose. Something like this. Stepping back, does that feel correct? You know, one thing I totally skipped, and you're not gonna wanna skip this. 
Find the nasal spine. The nasal spine is this little bone between your nostrils. So I'm going to measure from her chin to her nasal spine, and that's gonna go up exactly to her, the line for her eyebrows. So from here to here. There we go. Looks like I got it right. The, um, the more you practice measuring, the more you're gonna get it right just in your head. So it's something that you probably want to just put the hard work in at the beginning as you're learning drawing, and it'll begin to pay off big time later down the road for you. Okay. So next up, I wanna keep finding this brow ridge here. So I'll bring this eyebrow down. I'm gonna soften this sort of line that I made earlier. So I'm gonna bring this line down and allow myself to skip the unibrow just a little bit. But if that helps you keep, or if it helps you find clarity on what the brow ridge or the anatomical term is the superciliary crest, what that's doing, it's okay to keep the unibrow in there. And then you can always just separate it later with an eraser. Okay, here, one thing that I really like to do is I like to pretend like the eyebrow to the lower eyelid is one shape. And so you can unfocus your eye when you look at your photo reference and just see if you can really imagine it as just one shape from the eyebrow all the way down to the lower eyelid. And then I just capture it like this. See, it's, it's a technique called enveloping. And or it's, it's similar to like putting a pair of sunglasses on her, but you can start to see, do I have the distance from the eyebrow to the lower eyelid correctly captured here? So, same thing over here. And now I can step back and does this give us more helpful information here? We're also thinking about the width, the bridge of the nose, and how it's gonna widen out over here and connect into the lower part of the eyebrow. And we're treating the nose as if it is just a wedge shape. So, I'm thinking about making this nose look like a three-dimensional volume. I'm not thinking about nostrils. I'm not thinking about the complex combination of cartilage and bone, all that stuff. I'm just thinking about making this look like a three-dimensional shape emerging off of the page, just like hers is. You know, you look at this photograph and that nose seems to be just coming off the page. We can do that too with our drawing. I want to bring the bridge in, you know, her nose kind of sticks out a little bit more. So now, once we get that volume, we can start to nuance this a little bit and say, we've got a three-dimensional nose, now can we make subtle changes to make it her three-dimensional nose? Okay, so we're gonna keep going with the mouth. I love to ignore how complex the mouth is. I'm just gonna capture the major shapes. They, they push out here. And then, let's see, I'm guessing the distance from the chin to the bottom lip is from the bottom lip to the nasal spine. That's a pretty common comparative distance right there for this part. I'm gonna Allow this volume to push back in right there. And then it'll push right back out into the chin. And then let's find the corners of the mouth. So the corners of the mouth are gonna sit a little bit higher than the lower lip. Finding the angular relationship between the nostril and this corner here. Something like that. Am I feeling her lips yet? I'm not totally sure. 
but we'll see. Close enough for now. Okay. So I think this is good enough for now to move on to different parts of the portrait, right? So now I want to nuance this contour around the mouth into the chin. We're gonna move from this fuzzy line here. We're gonna let ourselves really sharpen this. Remember to let it go fuzzy again over here because we're not actually seeing a hard line over here. This is just a value. Okay, it's gonna come up here and then we really do have a harder separation where we see the earlobe right here. Did you see how I found the angle between the earlobe and the nose? We really don't want to skip out on that stuff. Okay, and then we've got the hair, it's coming up here, the sternocleidomastoid. Little space for that ear, and then the ear is really gonna disappear in there. Okay, I want a little more information on the clothes here. So the neck pushes out, back in, at this super sternal notch. Remembering this angle here, and it's gonna wrap around outside. We've got this space outside the sternocleidomastoid here, which has this thickness here. We can see it come in kind of converge with the throat right here. And how far out does the arm go? Well, it lines up pretty perfectly at this angle with the back of the hair. So I'll just connect that, and then I can always erase that. It should feel pretty good right there. Maybe it goes a little bit lower over here. Let's see, where is... Yeah, so this should be lower down here. Something like, more like this. Okay. Angular relationship. Finding sort of the front here in comparison to that brow ridge. And this sleeve, it's like a semi-transparent sleeve is gonna push out. That and the portrait feels like it's coming together pretty nicely here. Thinking about a little bit of the detail there, but I don't want to get too distracted. Okay, so now I think it's time to nuance these general shapes into more specific shapes. So, I'll start with the width of the eyebrows and that's gonna help me get the shape of the eyebrows. And I'm thinking here about value shapes. Not thinking about, here's the upper eyelid, here's the lower eyelid. Thinking about value shapes. And there's tons of different ways to do this. This is just the way I like to do it. value for these eyebrows. Okay, this is going to push out. And then the angle from the inside of the eyebrow down to the inner canthus right here, which is just that inner tear duct. Shout out to my student 
Katie, who is an ophthalmologist and taught me that term. And now I find I use it all the time. Just trying to find that value for the upper lid. Stepping back, does it feel correct? So far, so good. Okay, so one thing that lots of students have a hard time on, and lots of pros as well, really everyone does, is getting the irises placed naturally. And I would say the best thing to do, if you have a hard time with that, is just make sure you're practicing your ellipses. It's just one of those really simple shapes that the more you practice, the better things will be. You know, if you want to get better at portraiture, if you want to get better at figure drawing, if you want to get better at anything. I know it's not what most students want to hear, but practice simple shapes like cubes, cylinders, and spheres. All right, getting the value for these lower lashes down here. up top. In fact, I think this eyelid is getting a little too low, so I'm going to pull that value back, bring it up a little bit higher. Something like this. I want that eye to feel a lot more alert. That does feel better. Um, this fold needs to push farther this way. Okay, and this lower lid needs to push up a little bit higher as well. So this is some of the major benefit of keeping your drawings as light as possible in the planning stages. A lot of my students, I have to tell, tell them, start drawing lighter, start drawing softer, and that's, uh, that's where just general pencil control comes in. And um, a lot of you, a lot of your problems are you just need more expensive experience with a pencil in your hand. Now I kind of want to begin to get some of this lovely dark value in here. this out. Um, I want to be careful though. I really don't want to bring the hair in over this contour in a way that I can't erase it again because then that'll create major structural issues in the portrait, which I don't want. All right. We've got loose curls coming out like that. So the directionality of my, you know, I'm not just coloring this in, you know, like that. What I really want to let myself do is let the direction of my strokes serve the surface of whatever I'm drawing. I want to let it follow 
a direction that's helpful to the overall drawing, right? We're starting to get this wild head of hair. Of course, getting nice dark value on this newsprint is kind of difficult. Then we've got this shadow coming down this cheekbone and underneath the jaw, like right there. And I'll let myself drop this into shadow here. Okay, and we've got this very soft portrait beginning to emerge here. I might want to get a little more specific with some of this. Okay. Sometimes when a drawing is feeling way too soft for too long, like this one, I really wanna let myself come in and find these hard edges that are gonna help me find more structure. I'm not adding hard edges where I don't actually see them. Sometimes that's what happens is we feel like we need to add specificity where there is none and that just is not helpful don't fall into that trap I do all the time find specificity where there is specificity and bring it out Got a little highlight in this iris over here. There's actually a couple, but I really wanna make sure I'm keeping this simple. That's the most important thing to remember, keep up with. And I think these lower lashes come down a little bit more. Notice how I wait as long as possible to get the information on these nostrils in there. Because a lot of us use the nostrils to find the structure of the nose. But you should be able to find the structure of the nose without the nostrils because it's such a strong wedge shape and that's like way too dark. That's becoming too much of a focal point. I don't, really don't want her nostrils to be the focal point of this drawing. So I'm not just thinking about eyelashes. I'm not thinking about drawing things. I'm thinking about drawing value patterns here. Where am I seeing dark value? That's what I'm putting in. And if you do that faithfully, that's what will turn into the eyelid, the iris, the pupil, all that stuff. The 
width of the lashes are usually increased on the outside of the eye there. Now I'm really wanting to bring out this depth of the eyebrow here. Not drawing an upper lip and a lower lip, I'm just thinking about dark values. If you put them in the right place, when you step back, maybe you'll start to see it emerging all on its own, which is much better than having to force it. I want to kind of clean up the edges here too. I mean, look, my hands just get so covered in charcoal here. Okay. And I think, you know, this is just a quick study, you know, doing portraits, quick studies like portraits, nothing is going to sharpen your skill and just hone your skill like drawing a portrait in a short amount of time. So no matter what you, what it is that you like to draw, I think portraiture can be extremely helpful for you. So go on Pinterest or Google images or some kind of stock site or take your own pictures, find a portrait reference and just try drawing. Do not get discouraged if your first ones don't look amazing, just like anything else. Your first ones won't look amazing. Um, just have fun with it. Try to focus on making it as simple as possible. That's the best way to do it. That's the name of the game. Um, I think I need to give her more hair, don't I? I think it goes up higher, out farther. You don't really notice that stuff until you step back. If you haven't already um, subscribed to my channel, let me know in the comments what you think, what kinds of videos you'd like to see me make. I am taking suggestions. Um, so let me know what you think. If you see any ways that you think I can improve these videos, let me know that as well. And if you have any friends that you think these videos could be helpful for, send them to them. So I'm new to YouTube and would love to grow the channel, so I appreciate your help. A little more value on this nose. I think it's gonna help a lot. Bring it around like this. Now there's all these value shifts within the nose, but I'm really going to just try to treat it like it's one value. Try to find that basic, shape. I want this nose to stick out nicely from the page.
All right, so I think this is looking pretty good enough for what I wanted to accomplish. What I wanted to set out to do was just practice drawing a portrait. I don't use nice paper for this for these practices because I don't want to put a lot of pressure on myself. This is just cheap newsprint, and so this is this drawing is sort of destined to just go into a pile of old drawings and eventually thrown away or used as packing or something like that. Um, if I wanted this to be a brilliant work of art, I would have taken a lot longer on it. But the purpose is, is to just keep your pencil moving, keep trying stuff, having fun with it, and you will get better that way. You won't get better by making masterpieces. So go easy on yourself, try some things, see if you can simplify very complex subjects and have fun with yours. Like and subscribe. Peace and I'll see you on the next video.